Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I got a pretty good sized fabrication job that came into the shop this week. Basically, what I have is I have to make 100 of these right here. And what it consists of is some 5 16 thick by 5 inch angle iron. I've got some solid cold roll bar stock here that's inch and a half by two and a half by two. Uh, we've drilled and some counter drilled and countersunk holes on both sides of the angle iron, and I've got a half by 13 drilled and tapped hole in the center of the uh, cold roll bar stock. And then most importantly, we're gonna we're gonna weld the bar stock onto the angle iron right in here. And I have to be, it's a, it's a tight fit, so I've got to be careful uh, not to get any of the weld in the countersink holes, uh, and that's going to be pretty critical. We're going to be taking a look at three different processes here uh, for the welding, uh, dual shield flux core, SMAW, or stick welding, and some spray arc MIG. Uh, and find out which process uh, worked best for me and the one I chose for this project right here. Now, the way I got this from the metal supply store is I already had these things pre-cut, 100 pieces of the angle lines, so this is the way they came, and 100 pieces of the bar stock right here, and this is the way they came. So we're gonna stick it all together, and I'm gonna show you how I did. Let's get started today's video. All right, so here's the first thing I did right here. You know, because I had a hundred pieces of this, I had to come up with an easy way to, uh, you know, get these holes all lined up. So I made this jig right here, and that worked out pretty good. I was just able to line it up on the block and just use a transfer punch and uh, get those holes punched in there. That worked out pretty good for a hundred pieces. And then also over to the drill press again, um, just uh, drilling them right through there. You know, I had a whole bunch of holes to drill. I went down to KBC Tool and bought a whole pack of these drill bits uh, thinking that I might be burning them up but you know with the right RPM and the right uh, lubrication stuff in there this uh, drill bit actually uh, lasted the whole way through all 800 holes and I think we had 800 countersinked as well so um, the whole thing worked out pretty good you know the old shop fox right there is the new drill press the old uh, um, Ryobi just didn't quite make it I got about halfway through and then had to get the new drill press to finish her up but uh, seems to be working just fine and like I said, once I got that done, uh, the countersink is what I used right here. And it was the same process, just hooked it up in the uh, drill press and was able to get everything countersunk. Once again, I bought a couple of these over at KBC Tool. And uh, this uh, this one right here is a tungsten, or not tungsten, but carbide. And uh, it uh, went through there pretty good. Well, there's our three sample pieces we're going to be working with today. And I just got them cleaned up a little bit with some acetone before we got started. Jumped over to the mill, and, and this is the way I used, uh, or I, I made these holes in these blocks. You can see I've got a, a, a stop right there on my Kurt vise, and I was able to slide these things in, drill them perfectly, and then once I got them drilled through, I just got a gun tap and just speed tapped them right through and right out. It worked out perfectly. That worked out really good for those hundred pieces. You know, they had a little bit of rust on them, and uh, I just wanted to take a flap disc and clean a little bit of the rust off the areas we're going to be doing the welding, and uh, um, just using a flap disc right here to do that. That worked out pretty good. Okay, so I've got the three parts here, drill, tap, countersunk, and uh, I've got them mounted right here exactly where they need to go. I've got them clamped down. Uh, so all we're doing, all we need to do now is just go ahead and weld these things around. Uh, again, the three process is going to be uh, dual shield flux core. We're going to stick weld this, and then we're also going to do some spray arc MIG. Uh, we'll do all three, I'll weld them all the way around, and then we're going to take a close look at all of them and figure out, uh, uh, take a look at the differences and just figure out which uh, process is going to be best for me for this project that I'm doing. All right, let's get started. All right, so first up is dual shield flux core. We're going to be operating off the HTP uh, uh, 2400 here. It's a transformer based machine. That just happens to be what I have my dual shield on right now. Uh, I've got the settings at max, max, and max. Well, almost max. The wire feed is about 8 out of 9. Uh, 8 out of 10, I should say. And then the other settings are at its max. We're running 75, 25, 75 argon, 25 CO2. And I'm running about 40 CFH on that. The wire diameter is 35 thousandths. So let's give this first one a try, see how it does. 
Yeah, and there's no surprise here. You know, you can hardly go wrong with dual show flex gore. It's always a great process, and uh, I could tell that this uh, went in there really good with no problems at all. Uh, but we'll just see how that uh, compares to the rest of the processes. All right, we got that one down. Now we're going to jump over and use the HTP uh, 200 TLP stick welding machine, and we're going to be running at about 125 amps. And I'm going to be using uh, some 7018 eighth inch electrodes. I uh, got these at uh, usaweld.com. So uh, let's shut this machine off and uh, turn on the uh, 200 TLP and see how the stick welding work. You know, stick welding, the same thing. Everything went in there nice and smooth. Yeah, that was no surprise as well. You know, the 200 TLP is a, a very smooth operating stick welding machine. Well, look at that. One electrode per. Yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. All right. There's the stick welding. All right, let's shut this thing off. We're going to turn on the Propulse 200, and we're going to do some spray arc make and see how that works out. All right, so I'm running about 614 inches a minute right here, about 175 volts and, uh, or 175 amps, I should say, and we're running about uh, uh, 29 volts. So, yeah, we'll try that. We'll give, it a, we'll give it a shot and see how that works out. Also, it's 30,000 wires what I'm using on this. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with spray arc MIG, but I was really surprised how smooth and fluid this process really is. All right, that takes care of that. That's all three of them. Let me bring you in and take a closer look. All right, so here's the first one, some dual seal flux core. So the first thing is, uh, it looks, uh, the profile looks really nice so far here. Uh, we'll need to chip the slag off. That looks pretty good. Get a wire brush on it. All right, so I hope you can see that. That's that's pretty good looking weld right there. You know, everything is within the parameters of the uh, of the countersink holes. Uh, there's a little bit of spatter right there shouldn't be a problem a little bit more on this side right here uh, but all in all uh, looks pretty clean all the way around looks pretty clean let me uh let me just try to get a yeah just something to knock off the spatter comes off fairly easy All right, so I'd say that's pretty good right there. All right, not too bad. Uh, the disadvantage here is being this is a production run, uh, you know, having to chip the slag off uh, and maybe uh, hammer off a little babies. Uh, some maybe maybe some more than others, but uh, all in all, not too bad. We'll set that aside right over here. This is the stick welding one right here. Again, uh, we're going to need to chip the slag off here. This is the 7018. Get a wire brush on that. All right, so we'll take a look at this. Um, all in all, you know, the weld, the weld itself is really nice. Went in there really good. Uh, looks good. Again, the disadvantage here, uh, chipping slag off. And you can see I've got a lot more spatter here. Not a lot, but 
uh, some bigger BBs. And so I'm just going to see if I can knock these ones off and, uh, and we'll take a look at that a little bit closer. Now, these BBs come off fairly easy, but it's just, it's just something that, uh, you know, you're going to have to do. And, or at least something that I want to do, you don't necessarily have to do it. Alright, there it is, that's pretty clean. Just a few BBs on there, a few bigger ones. Yeah, I got one down inside the hole right here. See, this is just what I was trying to avoid. It's just trying to get stuff down inside the hole. But for the most part, this is the stick weld 7018. Lays in there pretty nice. It's a good looking bead. It's within the was within the parameters of keeping it out of the countersunk. All right, there's those two. All right, so now let's take a look at the uh, spray arc. Maybe. Really not a lot to do right here. I'm just going to wire brush this off, clean it up a little bit. All right, so here's the weld on that. Again, that, that went in there really smooth. Uh, there was no problem, nice and fluid. Looks good. Uh, zero spatter. I got one speck right here. I could probably deal with that. It was fast, it was clean. Uh, again, we're within the parameters of the countersink holes right here. Uh, Looks good, and I know it's uh, I know it's going to be plenty strong. So there's all three of them right there. All three of them are going to work just fine. Uh, but for me, I think the best uh, the best one is going to be the Spray Arc MIG. It's going to be the fastest, the cleanest, and the easiest in this application. You know, there's a place for fabrication for all three processes, that's for sure. But for this particular project that I have going on. Um, I'm going to think that uh, this prayer is the way to go. So, Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check out the website at jimbosgarage.com. Follow us on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. I've got 100 of these to do. I've already got 50 of them complete. i got to get these things finished up. See you next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.